Гледате Еврозум Плюс, Плюс од студиото во Европскиот парламент во Брисел. Тема на денешното издание на Еврозум Плюс е улогата на Германија во иднината на процесот на проширувањето по изборите во Европската унија. Мој гостин е прискнут уредник и дописник на поранешните на изданијата на поранешниот ВАЦ кој сега има поинакво име во Германија Knut, welcome to my program. Thank you to Thank accept you very this much invitation for and to to try to clarify a bit the position of Germany towards the enlargement process. Uh, anything new? <laughs> well, no, 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 yeah. The, to start on a positive note, I think some interest has been rekindled uh, by the uh, recent events in Serbia. Mm -hmm. So uh, Germany is very pleased to note that uh, there has been a market change of direction as far as the uh, um, government in Belgrade is concerned, a more constructive attitude by, by Vucic. Mm -hmm. And um, this being the biggest country in the Western Balkans, we have taken note. And this has, uh, as I said, uh, raised hopes and interests a little bit. So. The, the enlargement issue was kind of forbidden subject in, 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 with an internal debate in, in Germany because it's not popular. Uh, suddenly, after the, it was not a, an issue during the electoral campaign for the European election. No. Suddenly, just after the, the, the European election, Madame Merkel announced a conference in Berlin on the end of uh, August uh, with Western Balkans countries in order, if we well understood, to give an instant to, to, the, to the process of, of enlargement. How do you explain? Is it kind of form uh, or there is a real substance in, 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 inside this message? Well, I think it's more or less um, an attempt to make good use of what the Germans feel might be a window of opportunity. Mm -hmm. So you have a new government in, in Belgrade. Uh, the, uh, the Kosovo issue is on perceivedly good course. Um, and uh, so the, the Germans probably feel if they give a little, if they show a little involvement, if they engage a little with the uh, actors now, they might also push issues like, say, Bosnia, mm -hmm. which, which was a, a long lost cause as far as the German perception is, is concerned. Maybe one can do something about it anyway. Um, so I think that's, that's uh, the main idea, because after all, uh, we have thousands of German troops still on the Balkans. It's an important neighbor. We are still committed to bring in the Western Balkan countries. Um, and uh, yes, there is still, as far as the popular sentiment is concerned, there is uh, enlargement fatigue. But I think the, um, uh, the government and the political parties are interested to see some things moving forward. Do you think that the crisis in Ukraine and the crisis within the relation of European Union with, with, with Russia changed something within the attitude towards enlargement? Having in mind, I just read a, 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 a comment and analyze in, in foreign policy uh, magazine saying that maybe it's a good time and that what's, hap what's going on in Ukraine and the, the relation with Russia is a good lesson that we have to finish unfinished business in, right. in Europe. I think that's exactly the point. Um, there is some uh, embarrassment or realization that as far as Ukraine is concerned, uh, so uh, an immediate neighbor, an Eastern partner, as far as the uh, EU is concerned, uh, the EU did not do enough. So they negotiated this uh, association and, and free trade agreement and they waited for things to happen. And the Americans uh, were more active probably than the Europeans on the ground in, in, in Kiev. And so I think um, that some of the um, officials and government uh, in the EU, including Germany, may have come to the conclusion that Hold on, there is something unfinished business, as you say, in the Balkans as well. And this is something we have to take care of 
we have to uh, give uh, better impetus to we cannot allow this just to boil mm -hmm. on and and yeah. uh, madam ashton to continue we have to do something about it uh, can we can we can we uh, can we see this conference in berlin in this framework yes i think uh, i mean it I don't think on the German political agenda it will figure extremely highly because it's still the end of the holiday season and uh, you won't see thousands of journalists crowding in for that one. For sure. But it is, it is back on the agenda of the political elite. Uh, and um, from, from this point of view, I think, yes, uh, the, the realization that there is a larger responsibility as far as this is concerned will, will be felt during this conference. I, if that leads to any what you call substance in terms of real agreements and stuff, I cannot tell, I don't know. Um, I'm sitting here in Brussels and, and uh, I'm not privy to any spe specific details, but I think in terms of awareness, which is the basic for everything, in terms of awareness it will be a step forward. Uh, Knut, recently uh, there was no men so much interest in the German media about Macedonia, but recently we saw many articles in the, in the German, German language uh, newspapers and uh, even the uh, German public broadcaster about Macedonia and the, 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 the interesting point is that it's, those articles were very criti critical towards uh, the, 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 the government in Macedonia. There was an article I, uh, uh, called Kleine Dictator on, and there was, it, yeah. it was a, a story on, on, on air, they were very criti uh, yeah. critical towards yeah. the Skopje 2014. How, 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 how do you explain this? kind of interest of the German media for, for Macedonia in, well, in, in the very specific critic context? Well, I think, first of all, you have to put it into perspective and into proportion. We have a extensive German uh, news coverage and still quite some uh, large uh, political interest in which the Western Balkans and indeed Macedonia still figure. But don't be fooled, it's a specialist interest. Um, for specialist uh, people um, dealing with uh, this region of Europe and uh, correspondence dealing with the uh, political developments there. As far as the larger perception, the public in general is concerned, there is a huge danger as far as Macedonia is concerned that this is considered one of the forgotten conflicts of this world, like separation of Cyprus, say, for instance. Nobody cares anymore because they feel the, the people down there are not capable of coming to any solution of this, of this problem. Uh, as far as Gruevsky and the special spotlight on him is concerned, you have a parallel uh, well, um, development, if you so wish, he is, he's been now at the helm in, in Skopje for quite some time. He has been seeing as the main responsible for this thing not moving, not getting anywhere. And um, uh, he is maybe put into a category like, say, somebody like Viktor Orban in, in, in Hungary. So uh, uh, an all too authoritarian hardliner with whom to do business is, is, is difficult. So that's, that's probably it. There will be, there will be impatience and, and frustration on the part of those uh, who are interested in that region and Macedonia in particular, but the, the, um, the larger public will simply not care. Knut, uh, I, I, I have to ask you about the, your impression about the, the situation with the media in, in, the, in, the, in the region, having in mind that you were a, a yes. the chief of the office of the VATS when, yeah. when, when in the period when VATS was very much present in the, yeah. in the region. What, what, what's your personal opinion? What do you think? And I'm, not, I'm not asking you what's happened with VATS in the, in the region, but what's happened with the freedom of the media in the region? Yeah, I mean, what uh, has happened to VATS and its uh, engagement uh, in the region is, is not at all untypical. 
it fits into a larger context which is not um, uh, encouraging because uh, after the initial rush of enthusiasm, of discovering new business opportunities, of an even missionary approach to bringing the, uh, the virtues of free media to the region, um, a large disappointment set in. That was driven by uh, declining business prospects, uh, frustration with political interference, and a neglect uh, into, into media structures uh, as far as the uh, uh, European counterparts are concerned. So, VAT is not the only company which um, retreated, went back from that area. Others have done so as well. Uh, and it's an unfortunate development because at the same time here in Brussels, the European Union realized how important for stable democratic development, the free, media. Free, de free media are, but um, so you have you have a heightened, uh, an increased importance and realization of that importance on the one hand, but on the other hand you have less resources and uh, practical involvement to deal with that. Mm -hmm. So uh, that 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 is um, that is the a, a split development which is not very good. Mm -hmm. So. Um, as far as I am concerned, or I know, um, the uh, establishment of solid, independent free media in the region is unfinished business. Mm. And uh, I can't tell if we are still moving in the right direction. I hope we are. But um, I think the, uh, the actual drive behind it may have uh, uh, lessened, at least as far as the... Uh, European partners are concerned. Okay, Knut, thank you very much. Thank you, it's been a pleasure. All the best. To je še pris Knut, urednik na poranešnjih izdanja na VAC v Germaniji, dopisnik od Brisel, bi bravo vam za vnimanje, to što ogledavte v izdanje na Eurozum Plus od studijo to v Evropski od parlamenta. To gledanje.